Hello, this is Ed Hamler with your World in Review. Yesterday in the LaRouche Pack Weekly Report, Lyndon LaRouche in one breath uttered the only solution to the breakdown crisis ongoing in the United States. Reenact Glass-Steagall, extend emergency relief to the states to bail them out, not the banks, and begin the process of rebuilding this country with six million new jobs by launching a national mission for infrastructure development, the North American Water and Power Alliance. This program is the only thing that will rescue the United States from the complete blowout and utter bankruptcy of every state in the Union. Now, you would think that this program would be the first thing coming out of the mouths of the great opposition to Obama, the new Republicans who were just sworn in, who would like to take credit for Obama rescinding his Hitlerian 1233 regulation this week. But for some reason, the new Republicans have not entered the House with cries of Glass-Steagall or bail out the states, Because if it were not for their opportunistic display of opposition on occasion, you'd see that they are just like Obama. Now remember, Glass-Steagall is based on a universal principle. It's not just a piece of legislation. That principle is identified as the general welfare clause of the U.S. Constitution, the true intent of the forefathers. This was the principle employed in co-author to the United States Constitution, Alexander Hamilton's design for a U.S. credit system as opposed to a monetarist system. That principle allows the United States government to enact protective measures against Wall Street and London, for example, the appendages of the British Empire today. Their speculative private banking activities have become intertwined with legitimate commercial banking functions and are receiving bailouts while the states barely have the means to survive creating today a more severe crisis than in 1933 when Franklin Roosevelt first put the Glass-Steagall in place. So the United States government, as demonstrated by Roosevelt, can act on principle to defend our people and nurture their development because that is what we were constituted to do from the beginning of this nation. Therefore, Glass-Steagall's heritage began when the nation did. So while the members of the House of Representatives were reading the Constitution out loud this morning and the Republicans on the premises showboating for the Tea Party, few of them knew of what they were actually reading. Here's a case in point. The Constitution does not allow austerity, the kinds of austerity that Obama and the Republicans want to enforce on the states. What's their solution? To strip the intent of the forefathers out of the Constitution under the guise of protecting the banks, with an amendment to the Constitution, of course. It was reported that at noon Monday, the House Republican Conference had already pledged to change the House rules so that anyone introducing a bill would have to cite the authority under the Constitution for that bill. Now today, New Jersey Republican Representative Scott Garrett proposed a rule change to forbid a member to cite the general welfare or the necessary and proper clause as his authority, restricting all bills to those that would carry out the specific enumerated powers as per Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. Garrett has also founded the uh, New Congressional Constitutional Caucus, establishing himself as the leader in constitutional reform in Congress. In a separate location, Garrett said he believes that Congress could easily get federal spending under control if it would simply follow the Constitution. And when he was asked to give examples of unconstitutionality, he cited education and transportation as unconstitutional. He said, I've asked the question to prior secretaries of education when they appeared before me in various committees. What is your constitutional authority to do what you're doing? And they will say... Congress authorizes us to do so. Congress can't authorize something that is not in the Constitution. Scott Garrett, who has just become the new chair of the House Financial Services Subcommittee on Capital Markets, got a lot of funding from hedge funds and also wants deep cuts in social services, just like a lot of Republicans. But unlike some Republicans, he's a part of a movement of tenthers those who use the Tenth Amendment to justify a push for Confederacy-style states' rights. So I think we know where his loyalties are, and it ain't the U.S. Constitution. 
This measure that he's proposing essentially would turn the U.S. Constitution into a meaningless set of rules that we would enforce for no apparent principled reason. Every law passed would be uh, the fruit of a backroom deal or political tactic with no principle involved. In other words, what we're seeing is the making of a dictatorship. And frankly, under a dictatorship, there definitely ain't going to be a Glass-Steagall or relief to the states. So this program must be stopped and exposed now. Now, counterpose what Garrett's pushing to what Democratic candidate for New Jersey, Diane Sayer, has done in reviving the Hamiltonian approach to economics in New Jersey, the home of Hamilton's former industrial center, Patterson, New Jersey. She's emphasized that it is the utterance of federal credit based on the general welfare principle for the kinds of industry typified by Patterson, New Jersey, uh, in Hamilton's time, and the WAPA now that we can actually depend on for the nation as a whole, and that that principle in our Constitution compels us to get, kick the bankers out and anyone in government that's with the bankers. So Garrett has made himself an open target by essentially calling for the dissolution of the American Constitution. Diane Sayer has come out strongly as the Hamiltonian candidate for the state of New Jersey with the solution. So I think that makes Scott Garrett the Aaron Burr candidate. But the Aaron Burr candidate has a friend in the Obama administration who was the Hitler candidate. I mean, the Republicans being true liberals with no principles and all. It makes a good fit. Now, while this stuff was going on in the House of Representatives, the Obama administration formally urged Congress to increase the government's borrowing limit as early as March to avoid an unprecedented default or to hasten another unprecedented bailout. The Republicans will agree to this madness on the condition that they can kill off the population with even deeper cuts to spending. So needless to say, it won't work, and both Obama and these Republicans are a match made in hell, and they must be removed. Now be that as it may, as Mr. LaRouche pointed out yesterday, reality has a tendency to assert itself despite what many think their predetermined plans are. And as Linda LaRouche's latest paper makes clear, reality lies in principles, not in the senses. Our job as creative beings is to make those principles manifest. And it's the job of the federal government to orient the nation around meaningful missions of principle to make that happen. That means, again, Glass-Steagall, relief to the states, and the WAPA now. And guess what? Obama has to go if that's even going to be possible. Now, throughout the upcoming weekend, we will have statements from all of the LaRouche Democratic candidates to further make this clear. So look out for them. There'll be both video and written statements. Also, January 22nd, Lynn LaRouche will be holding his next webcast. So we need you to spread the word and contact a LaRouche Pack office near you to attend a showing in your area. And finally, contribute. We need your support and financial help as we go into the upcoming period. Because as we've demonstrated, we have in our hands the only real solution right now, and it's available. And we're more than ready to fight. All we need is backup from you. So contribute today, and finally, prepare for your morning report tomorrow. Have a good night. This is Ed Hamler signing off. We'll see you tomorrow.